Welcome to Damn Good Movie Memories with your host, Ryan Davis. This podcast is the cure for your long commute and super boring work day. Hey, it's Brian Davis, and for this week's episode, we're going to cover live-action Disney films. Last week, we did our favorite animated Disney films. This week, we get non-animated. All right, so I have a top 10 list like I did last week. This was a little bit easier for me. Last week was really difficult. There were picks I left out, um, but this week, it's a little bit more concise. All right, let's start with my top 10 list now. Actually, before we get into my top 10 list of favorite live-action Disney movies, I want to give a shout out to the Rock and Metal Combat podcast. The guys were kind enough to have me on their podcast last week as we discuss Armored Saints' amazing album from the year 2000, Revelation. Uh, Ian Wadley and Ralph Vieira both are amazing guests, are amazing hosts, and let me guest host on their show. And I had been on before for uh, we reviewed the Pride and Glory album, and it was super fun. And I really enjoyed talking to those guys. They were just top notch, super hilarious, and really, really knowledgeable about all things hard rock and heavy metal, among other genres of music. In addition, they're also big fans of movies, and so we kind of did a mini movie episode, kind of what we do here on Damn Good Movie Memories and they had a lot of fun with it. So I'm really hoping to get both Ian and Ralph on the show, hopefully soon. So again, thank you so much, guys. Uh, Hopefully we get some uh, additional listeners um, that also listen to the Rock and Metal Combat podcast, and hopefully those new listeners enjoy what we're doing. So go back, listen to some cool episodes, and hopefully you enjoy what we're doing in the future. All right, now here's my top 10 list. All right, number 10 for my favorite non-animated Disney film is The Mighty Ducks from 1992. To show how popular The Mighty Ducks movie was, a pro hockey team in Anaheim was actually created with the name of The Mighty Ducks. However, the team name was officially changed to a more traditional Anaheim Ducks in 2006. How boring. Anyway, the movie stars Emilio Estevez, who plays a defense attorney who was arrested for drunk driving and is sentenced to commute community service and therefore much must coach a youth hockey team he had dreams of becoming a hockey player and this kind of brings him back to his past some fun trivia joshua jackson who plays one of the ducks players is best known for his role as pacey on dawson's creek so it's kind of cool to see him in an early film all right number nine is gus from 1976 it's funny how disney movies always seem to involve animals more often than not for gus it's a mule who ends up playing pro football you can see why i like this the movie stars don knotts and ed asner along with tim conway and tom bosley gus is a mule who becomes a sensation in his homeland of yugoslavia after kicking a soccer ball a very long distance Gus's trainer trains Gus to kick a ball after yelling the word oyage. Eventually, a terrible pro football team in America learns about Gus and figures he can help the team. And, of course, attendance. Number eight is Bed Knobs and Broomsticks from 1971. This was definitely one of my favorites growing up, and my mom would often rent this for my sister and I. The movie stars Angela Lansbury and David Tomlinson. Of course, fans of Mary Poppins will also see similarities in Bed Knobs and Broomsticks. Of course, David, Tom- David Tomlinson was in Mary Poppins, and then Angela Lansbury kind of plays, you know, the, the nanny, and so there is a lot of similarities, but it's a very well-done film. I also liked how they included Angela animation in this much much like mary poppins and of course my favorite scene was the soccer game which always amused me number seven is the parent trap from 1961 I always enjoyed The Parent Trap when I was a kid. I also thought the sisters were played by different actresses. Don't judge me. Of course, Haley Mills actually played both of the roles, with the body double being used for scenes where you don't have to see the face of one of the sisters. So speaking of fully not grasping things, I mentioned this in the Meet the Parents episode, I once asked my parents if they had color when they were growing up. Stick with me here. The logic being behind this question of to my four-year-old mind was due to watching movies and TV shows from the 1950s, like Leave to Beaver and I Love Lucy, because they were all shot in black and white. Therefore, I naturally assumed that life back then was in black and white. I know, it's amazing how far I've come and that I'm even allowed to podcast. 
Anyway, back to the movie, and not soon enough. The Parent Trap also features wonderful performances by Maureen O'Hara and Brian Keith as the girl's parent. Number six is Honey, I Shrunk the Kids from 1989. This was kind of a bit of a throwback movie for Disney as it went back to the live-action era of the 60s and 70s for the studio. Uh, The movie stars Rick Moranis as a loving father, but bumbling scientist and inventor who creates a machine that can shrink objects to microscopic sizes. It's a lot like the absent-minded professor. By accident, his kids and the neighbor kids are shrunk to incredibly small sizes, and the movie becomes an adventure tale, even though it's only the daily occurrences of the family's backyard. There's some great scenes in this, and really, it it turns into this really fun thing where they're dodging the the, uh, lawnmower and things like that. Just a really done, well done movie. And it's really too bad that Rick Moranis retired not too long after, maybe five years later, uh, to basically take care of his children. Number five is The Love Bug from 1968. Who didn't love Herbie as a kid? The Love Bug is a very enjoyable live action Disney film from the late 1960s featuring Dean Jones, Buddy Hackett, Michelle Lee, and David Tomlinson. I think every kid who saw this movie wanted their parents to go out and buy a Volkswagen Beetle or bug. Uh, as a kid, one of my friend's parents had one, and you can imagine my disappointment of how unherbie like this, this car was when his dad drove us around. It was pathetically slow and absolutely did not spray oil at people. Actually, it might have leaked oil, which wasn't exciting at all. Number four is the Shaggy DA from 1976. This is the sequel to the original Shaggy Dog, which was originally released in 1959. Wilby Daniels is now grown up and played by Dean Jones, who is best known for the Love Bug movies, which we just mentioned. Unfortunately for Wilby, after years of having the inner dog in him being dormant, the affliction suddenly comes back, of course, all while trying to run for district attorney. The supporting cast is excellent as many of the Disney stalwarts appear like Su- Suzanne Plachette, Tim Conway, Keenan Wynn, and Dick Van Patten. My favorite scene as a kid was the huge pie fight which occurred late in the movie. Number three is The Absent-Minded Professor from 1961. I'm pretty sure this was the first Fred McMurray movie I watched as a kid. He was a really a terrific actor as he could play any type and a type of role. I mean, he was kind of played a heavy back in the 40s when, you know, one of his most famous roles was Double Indemnity. But in The Absent-Minded Professor, he was so naturally likable that you couldn't help but root for him in his plight to produce flubber, which is flying rubber for the masses. Being a sports fan at younger age, my favorite scene as a kid was, of course, the basketball game in which a terrible high school uh, team was able to jump higher than the other team because their shoes were filled with flubber. Also, any Disney movie that had Keenan Wynn in it is fabulous because he always played the villain role so perfectly. My dad actually told me a story that when he when he was a kid, uh, he saw Keenan Wynn while waiting in line for a ride at Disneyland. For some reason, my dad found it necessary to start chanting, Winnie, Winnie. And I guess Keenan Wynn's wife found it amusing and smiled at my dad. Number two is The Shaggy Dog from 1959. I will always enjoy Fred McMurray movies, and I love dogs, so this sounds like a winner to me. I always liked the classic monster movies as well, and especially fascinated how the Wolfman would change from human to wolf before your eyes. You kind of get to see the same thing in the original Shaggy Dog, but obviously the outcome is not as terrifying. The story is fun, and the cast of teenagers are great, with Tommy Kirk, Annette Funicello, Kevin Corcoran, and Roberta Stone. I always used to laugh how Moochie, played by Kevin Corcoran, would call Tommy Kirk boy like he was a real dog and not his older brother. All right, we've reached the number one pick. And much like the animated, my animated list, I'm going to pick something that probably nobody's going to pick. But again, these lists are personal. There are no wrong answers here. So I'm going with the original Freaky Friday from 1976. I'm completely faithful to the original Freaky Friday because it's the version I grew up with, loved, and will continue to support. I mean, come on. I'm going to choose Jodie Foster well over Lindsay Lohan any day. Plus, John Aston, who of course was Gomez in the Adams Family, plays the father. Come on. I loved everything about this movie, all the wacky scenarios like the overflowing washing machine and the water skiing event. And the sports scenes like the field hockey game and playing baseball in the park were terrific. So if you're going to watch a version of Freaky Friday, stick with the original. I realize that most of my picks have been remade at some point, so let's go through them. So like, uh, the let's see, The Parent Trap was remade, I think, with Lindsay Lohan. Uh, the Love Bug was remade with Lindsay Lohan. The Absent-Minded Professor was renamed as Flubber, but that was with Robin Williams. And The Shaggy Dog was remade with Tim Allen. So anyway, 
whatever it depends on the area you grew up with but i'm telling you stick with the originals and then go back and watch and, and see if uh you've changed your mind at all all right let's see what everyone else has to say in this week's episode all right pd is back this yeah. th- <laughs> that's right this oh, i should have some sort of theme music or something yeah. like that be leading yeah. into it so. or just the why don't we just have the law and order <laughs> <laughs> dun, dun, dun. i'll have to throw that in yeah. but then enrica will get jealous yeah because, sorry yeah but, you know what enrica gets yeah you know that one she's enrica the, pd that's right <laughs> <laughs> I like that. That's, that's their new spinoff, Law & Order, <laughs> Enrica PD. Um, okay, so for this week, we last week we did our favorite animated Disney films. This week we're going to do live action. So um, it'll be interesting because I, most of, I, I kind of stopped watching live action Disney. I don't even know if they really still do them anymore. I, yeah. Good question. Yeah. Yeah. I, I think you don't really notice them as much. Sure. They yeah. don't make a big deal like this is a Disney action or live action movie. Yeah, it used to be a big deal, yeah. um, and so you, you're, you as a, a parent of a young child, you, you maybe you'll start to get yeah, more. Yeah, maybe I'll learn what what's Disney. Yeah, again. <laughs> and I'll have to bring you back. We'll talk about right. We're, we're stuck in Pixar. I've yeah. seen uh, Finding Dory a million times. Oh, there you <laughs> go. <laughs> it's a good movie, but yeah, it's a, after a while. Well, it gets... like Cars too. It's like oh jeez. <laughs> I mean, the original Cars, not Cars two, which I still haven't seen. But... <laughs> yeah, it's it's yeah. definitely not as good. Yeah. Anyway, anyway it's the first. But Digression, let's get into yeah. <laughs> let's get into our favorite live action. All right. So uh, I have a list of about five here. Okay. Um, no particular order except that Mary Poppins is my favorite. Okay. Um, I just remember seeing that, I think, probably twice in the theater as a kid, maybe in separate, separate releases, and then on TV and probably on cable and, you know, like network TV. Um, was, I don't know. It was, it was a good movie, like great songs. Yes. Um, yeah, had you I know read I, the book? I don't think I did. Okay. I think we had the book on at home, and mm-hmm. I never cracked it open because it was one of those. I was a little kid, and like we had a really old version of it, and like the book just looked, I don't know, like, <laughs> like dirty and apart, dusty yeah. and old. And, like I don't know. It was just yeah, just laziness. <laughs> yeah, we had the same. It was like we had the old copy of Huckleberry Finn and and mm-hmm. all the old Mark Twain books. And I yeah. just never had the. <laughs> I never yeah. wanted to open it up. To, yeah. yeah, I think it was. Well, the other thing is like it's one of those things where if you see the movie and then know there's a book or know the book afterwards, it's yeah. not as good. I mean, sure. The all time for that for me on that is uh, Hunt for Red October, which I never I, I knew it was a book, but I read it like well after the movie. I'm right, like, this is, it's different, and it wasn't as you know as good Sounds as I good. the movie. Mm-hmm. Anyway, so yeah, Mary Poppins is my favorite. favorite I have a feeling that's going to be the common number one. Yeah, yeah I yeah. would guess that it is. Mm-hmm. Um, Although but not there's online. there's the <laughs> argument I, mean, I guess by Rotten Tomatoes and other people who say it's an animated movie because it has animation in it. And, yeah, it has a scene. I don't yeah, know. Like, it's just one, one scene, scene, right? Yeah, exactly. I don't know. See, I don't you know, not, I, I don't know if you're going to pick it or not, but like who framed Roger Rabbit? That's, yeah, that's another it's another one on there. Yeah, yeah because that's, so that's that's way more animation yeah, than Yeah, and Mary I actually Poppins. included that as as live action. Which well, is fair. Because yeah. yeah, it's it's both. It is. You could, that one you could really say it's both because there's a lot of animation in there it. There is throughout. Um, and the main characters. And animated. it's kind of the point yeah. is that it is both, but mm-hmm. yeah, I I liked Roger Rabbit. It was really cool how they combined the characters, not just Disney, but like Warner Brothers. Yeah, which was fun. Yeah. Um, it was probably villain. the first crossover. Uh, yeah, movie. probably, yeah. I, mean, I don't know if almost we'll ever see that again. No. I really like that. Um, it was, and there were great actors. Bob Hoskins. Great. Yeah, he was awesome. Christopher uh, Lloyd. Yeah, Christopher Lloyd was great. And <laughs> then uh, Kathleen Turner villain. played uh, yeah, Jessica the Rabbit. Yeah, Jessica Rabbit, yeah. Was, which was perfect. Yep. Um, Roger Rabbit was probably, well, the guy who did him, I mean, his... Super annoying. Oh, he was. Yeah, he was. And it was. It was supposed to be, and he was perfect. But yeah, it was kind of like he wasn't my favorite of the of the characters. No. Yeah. But I definitely remember my mom buying this on VHS when it came out. And that was a big deal. Yeah. So, yeah. Yeah, it was good. Um, so then I have oh Swiss Family Robinson, oh, which yeah. was something we, we saw probably on TV a couple times, or my parents rented it. It was one of my dad's favorite Disney movies, so he was keen to show us that. Sure. As you know, when we were young um and i remember liking it although i I, like right now i couldn't tell you much about it other than the tree there's the tree house (laughs) and they have i don't know if they still have it at disneyland they i think they still have or they turned it into like the tarzan tree house instead yeah they rebranded it but um which kind of makes sense because swiss family robinson's from like the early 60s or something like that so i don't you know i don't think anyone any kid nowadays would have heard of it at all. Unless they remake it. And yeah, which, again. you know, hey, maybe they, they may. They, they remake a lot. <laughs> maybe they'll of remake stuff. it as an animated movie right. and then remake it as a <laughs> you never know. <laughs> live yeah. action. Yeah. Yeah. But that was it. Yeah. And, and that brings up a good point. Like, if you saw it on TV, the Wonderful World of Disney being yeah. on, on. That on was Sundays. probably where I yeah. saw it. Yeah, yeah. Wonderful World, World of Disney was a lot like. 
intro to all those live action Disney like Apple Dumpling oh, games, yeah. which I like, but those, yeah, yeah. <laughs> silly. They don't hold up well. Not, no, for, no, not really. Uh, Old Yeller, which I can't mm-hmm. put on my list because no. just what happens at the end traumatizes yeah, everyone. Too much, tra- yeah. too much trauma. Yeah, movies, Disney movies were definitely grittier. Even the cartoons yeah. were grittier. Yeah. yeah. So another one I have is Tron, which nice. is objectively probably not not <laughs> yes. a very good movie at all, <laughs> uh-huh. but it's good for its era. Like yeah. it, I think it was one of the very first uh, computer animated. I mean that one's I guess maybe animated too. I don't. Yeah, <laughs> the no. action er, uh, characters with like this computer animation overlay on top of them. Right. They're just kind of like painted over with digital stuff. Uh huh. Um, so did so, you see, was there a sequel or was there a remake? There was a sequel, okay. which was not good. Right. <laughs> it had a Daft Punk soundtrack, which That's was right. good. <laughs> That's probably the best part of it. And they kind of, but, was, and they made Jeff Bridges look young again, right? Like they uh, kind of, yeah, and his, yeah, yeah they did. It was, yeah. they, they did a pretty good job with the effects in that one, because right. they had the ability to do so. But That's kind of the charm of the original Tron, though. Yeah, the like, original yeah. was just kind of like, wow, this is, <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> you look at it now, it's pretty bad. Oh, but, yeah. I think the story is still, I mean, you know, it's kind of, it's pretty much BS, but <laughs> <laughs> you can see, I don't know, you could see a, a reworked version of that someday and maybe they could make it more realistic. They can make it better, yeah. And certainly better, better animation. Sure. Better, better design. Um, well, one of my, actually, one of my favorite things of, of Tron is the there's a little floating dot called Bit, and it just answers yes or no to everything. Uh-huh. So it's, it's pretty cool. I kind of wish I had one of those like floating around, like you just ask me a question and I'll tell you yes or no all the time. I wonder if they would that if that's the inspiration to Groot because that's pretty it could much be. you know, that's all Groot does yeah. is answer the same way. So. Groot. <laughs> yeah, and then the other one I had is kind of an honorable mention is uh, Miracle. Yeah, you got the Miracle on Ice. Yeah, and that's kind of a recent. Disney live action. It I don't is. know. It's probably within the last ten years, right? I, I want to say it's like ninety-five, maybe. I oh, I thought it was more of a two thousand or two thousand five or something like that. Let's take a look. Good but yeah, question. that's a great one. I mean, if you if you know your history with the with the greatest hockey yeah. upset in yeah. history, yeah, yeah. So it was a pretty good dramatization of that. And Kurt Russell, and Kurt, kind of going back to his Disney roots, because Kurt Russell was oh, yeah. in a lot of those movies in the '70s. What like was Disney, he in? He was in those Strongest Man type oh, or Strongest Kid. That. Like he was in the Computer War Tennis Shoes, and then <laughs> um, yeah, they're just really fun. I don't think I've seen any of those, although I have this vague knowledge of it. But yeah. Oh, you're right. 2004. Okay. So it is. Yeah. So it's recent. Yeah. The other honorable mention would be um, if you want to go to sports vein, The Rookie. Uh, with Dennis Quaid, that was good. Too. That, yeah. yeah, similar. That was pretty good. True yeah. story, and uh, yeah. yeah, yeah. I think for the like the sheer drama and the unexpectedness, the, the Miracle on Ice is pretty good. They oh, did totally. A good, they did a, did a really good dramatization of it, even though you know the outcome and everything. But sure, it's yeah, it was great. But kind of the inner workings of that, and then just seeing yeah, that, yeah, you know, and obviously it's Disney, so it's not as um, there's no really vulgarities. Yeah, I'm like, sure. Yeah, I'm sure the, <laughs> those guys are a little bit more coarse. Yeah. But from what I've read, like, it pretty much, the the main coach said it was a pretty good uh, depiction of oh, what, what it really yeah. was. So. All right. Great All right. job, yeah, as thanks. always. Thank you. All right. Enrique's back. She was singing Law & Order. So Hello. Which is her favorite. It's my favorite show on television. By far. By far. Well, cool. yes. But we're we'll friends have to, as well. Well, friends, of course. But we're gonna have to move on from that. And we're gonna have to talk about Disney again. Disney. This, this time, live action. Okay. So. I'm ready. All right. Okay. <laughs> we, we, you caught me off guard there. Um, <laughs> we are not going to discuss Free Willy because we discovered it wasn't. It's not Disney. It's not Disney, but that's okay. We go back to pretty much every other episode, and you can hear. Yes. Erica talking. Uh, about. It's my favorite movie of all time. Yeah. Absolutely. (laughs) But for today, we're going to only talk about the live action Disney movies that are actually Disney movies. So what do you want to start with? This one I had to look up because I didn't know which of them were Disney and which weren't. Because without like the classic Disney animation Mm -hmm. symbol that they put on the VHSs, I couldn't remember like which ones were. And the later ones are are less obvious. Yes. Um, And obvious, the one that I knew off the top of my head that was obvious mm-hmm. newsies 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 oh, yeah. newsies yeah. newsies newsies this is my favorite yeah. animated disney movie of all time and well, not animated not live action yes. excuse me yes mm-hmm. and it you know it's funny because they i saw it on broadway and mm. they put it they put a broadway production a filmed broadway production version on netflix recently and i rewatched it on 
Netflix, and I was like, oh my god, I love this musical so much. And I think I like the movie better than the, the Broadway show. But really? The movie is my favorite movie of all time. I used to dance around. I really identify with dancing little boys. Newsboys. <laughs> Newsboys were my jam, and you know the whole like Brooklyn thing, yeah. and the New York City, and the history of New York, and you know Pulitzer and Hearst, and the unionization, and the mistreatment of children laborers during the Industrial Revolution. Mm-hmm. All of it was very important to the history of New York City. And um, wow, I didn't I realize love this it was Disney so much. Great so, cast: like, Christian Bale. Yeah. Ugh, so Bill Pullman, mm-hmm. Robert Duvall. Ugh, so good. It's one of my favorite movies. Period. And the fact that it's Disney just added to the. I think you're the. You're definitely the only one to mention it so far. So that's a good pick. That's it's my favorite one. Great job. I'm so happy that it was Disney because I would have talked about it no matter what <laughs> yeah. this episode was because I just watched it. So. If, in the battle royale between Free Willy and Newsies, what are you going to pick? Oh, God. I can't do that. <laughs> Sophie's can't. Choice. You got to pick kill one. each other. Desert Island. You can only watch one. What are you going to pick? Oh, my God. Probably Newsies. Okay. But no offense to... Not because Free Willy um, isn't as good or better, but because Newsies has really intricate choreography, and I would be very bored on a on a desert island and would just watch it over and over and, re- and learn the choreography, and that would be, like, something to do. <laughs> yeah. That's good. So, fun thing about Newsies is, like, one of the most challenging choreographed musical mm-hmm. since West Side Story. And when they cast the Broadway cast, mm-hmm. it was, like, super challenging for them to find dancers of that caliber who yeah. could perform the choreography and also sing and act. So, dancing in that show is unbel- it's unreal. Yeah. It's, like, the most amazing thing to watch. Hmm. The dancing, remarkable dancing. It's the highest energy I've ever seen on screen was, uh, or on stage. I should ask my. I should talk to my mom because she loves every. She loves musicals and mm. she loves Disney, so I'm sure this has definitely been mm. on her list. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So that's a good one. Mm-hmm. Okay, so how are you going to top that? Well, you're not going to top it, but what are your what are your other? Um, okay, so I just was looking through the list of live action. Yeah. Disney, because I don't know which ones are which, mm-hmm. and I noticed The Rocketeer was on there. That is a good one. I remember seeing that at the theater. Yeah. I watched it with my brother like over and over and over again when we were little. Yeah. We love Rocketeer. It's a forgotten one, but it's not bad. Yeah. yeah. Um, I believe that there's a a scene with like a wagon, like the mm-hmm. red wagon. Yeah. We always had the little red wagon all mm-hmm. the time. We, we would reenact. The Delta scene. Fire red yeah. wagons, yeah. Mm-hmm. We had one of those. And, and we would reenact that all the time. We also had, uh, oh, what are they called? Bottle rockets. Oh, yeah. Yep. We launched those all the time. <laughs> well, out in the country, you can do a lot of you things. You can do it. Yeah. <laughs> we would ride our little red wagon down the hill mm-hmm. into the wood pile. And the collision with the wood pile mm-hmm. from the wagon, from the Radio Flyer. Yes. Yeah. Radio Flyer. Yes. Yes. I'm confusing Rocketeer and Radio Flyer. Uh, from, yeah. But I liked both of them. <laughs> well, I Radio think... Flyer is the, the brand of the, the um, yeah. But the Radio wagon. Flyer yeah. is the movie. There is a, yeah, you're right. There is a Radio Flyer movie. Yeah. I'm confusing the two. I think they're both Disney. But I like Rocketeer too. <laughs> the Rocketeer is so good. Um, we used to act out scenes from both the Rocketeer and Radio Flyer. We watched them both all the time. I'm just checking to see if it's a Disney movie because if it is, came out ninety two. They came around the out and around the same time. Because this is my age, you know. Radio Flyer. I don't think it's a narrated by Tom Hanks. That's (laughs) why I love it. (laughs) He's my favorite. My favorite ever. Oh, you know who's in Radio Flyer? Elijah Wood. Yeah. Yeah. It is not a Disney movie. That's okay. But Rocketeer is, and you mentioned Rocketeer is, and I do remember watching Rocketeer and loving it so much. We watched it so many times, and I just loved the idea of being able to strap on, like, a jetpack. Yeah. And, like, fly. Because it was supposed to take place during, like, the 40s, right? I, guess I think World so. War II it's era. like World War II. I mean, but that, that nuance is lost on us as kids. Sure. We just thought it was so cool, this character. We love the character yeah. of the Rocketeer. So my and guess... And the fact that he was, like, hunted by these, like, mafioso yeah. guys in, like, the black suits. It was, like... The ultimate villains because mm-hmm. they were so mysterious. It was great. I need to go back and watch that one. I haven't seen it. Good this. one. And I got to watch Newsies. Yeah. So my guess is the ones that I had on my list. You probably saw the the remakes. 
So, probably. Freaky Friday. Yes. So you probably like the, the Lillian I one. I did not. You didn't? Okay, didn't but like you saw the, the you've never did, seen the original. I never saw the original. I did see the Lohan one. So see the one with Jodie Foster. I will, because I love Jodie Foster. There, and you I get love her as a kid. Con, what was it? The plane one. Con Air? No. Yeah. She's the on plane. a plane. <laughs> and the kid is trapped under Oh, yeah, the plane. It's, it's a thriller, yes. It's good. It's not Con Air, but yes. I, I really like her in that movie. <laughs> uh, she, well, she's great in everything. Yes. Silence of the Lambs. And, yes. Uh, Plenty of things. Um, yeah, so that's really good. And then um, John Aston plays her father, who is Gomez in the original Adams Family. Oh, so, yes. So yeah, the- I am too. Like Disney is such a of the time. Type oh, it of is. Thing. So I like was only exposed to the nineties, which mm. is why. So you yeah, let's see. Did you see the original Love Bug? No. Okay. Did you didn't see the Lindsay Lohan one either? No. Herbie fully loaded. Yes, that was the. I didn't, yeah, not a fan. Um, you probably saw Flubber. Was yes, wrong. Okay. I loved Flubber. So you can also see the original in black and white with I never Fred saw McMurray. the original. So it's called Absent Minded Professor. So. I'll have to watch that yeah. because I love Robin Williams. I mean, I don't know if I would like Flubber if it wasn't for Robin Williams. It's it's a different, less, it's still madcap, but it's, he Fred McMurray is more of a father as opposed to, oh, hey, look at me, I'm Robin Williams. He's you know? crazy, yeah. 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 So that was definitely, Flubber I, was one of my favorites as yeah. a kid. I have one. Uh huh. <laughs> Homeward Bound. The incredible. Oh, I forgot journey. about that. Yeah, that's true. Yeah. Animals going on adventures. <laughs> <laughs> also applicable in live action, apparently. That's true. And uh, was Airbud part of Disney? Um. Yes, because Airbud's also there, and that was in, mentioned in one of my favorite. You animal do like movies. Airbud. Yeah. I love Airbud. <laughs> <laughs> Don't judge me. <laughs> I am not judging. I love golden retrievers. I love when they go on adventures, and I love when they play sports. So, Airbud. Airbud's on there. <laughs> that's one of my faves. Okay. Um, Hocus Pocus. That's yeah. That's a good one. That's a fun one. It's coming time <clears throat> to watch it again. I, I try Halloween. to watch it every Halloween. Mm-hmm. And that's the ones that stick out. Well, okay. Um, Angels in the Outfield. So the remake was not. That's a remake. I saw that in the theater with Danny yeah, Glover and I've Tony Danza. I've never Danza. seen the older one. The older. It's it's. It doesn't feel like a Disney movie at all because it isn't, but it's yeah. very, it's not gritty, but um, the baseball's old because it's 1950 and yeah, it's the Pirates. right. So. Hey, the Pirates are good again. No, I know that. No, but um, <laughs> they make the Angels actually the team, right. uh, the California Angels. So. Right. Oh, yeah. That's the Angels in the outfield. Yeah. And, yeah, they I twisted remember it. that. Well, there were no Angels team back in the 50s, so they had mm-hmm. to use the Pirates. Okay. Last one, uh-huh. 101 Dalmatians. The live action. I didn't like the animated version, but you put freaking Glenn Close. Yep, yep. And it just becomes amazing. And I think we're getting kicked out. That's but okay. But we. That's it. I mean, that's all of them. So. Cruella DeVille. Perfect. Cruella DeVille. Thank you, Enrique. You're welcome. All right, we're back with Samantha. Last week we did animated Disney films. Now we're going to do the live action films. And there's always some controversy because certain ones have animation in the live action, but we'll see where you go with this one. There are so many live actions. There are. I am a little overwhelmed. <laughs> I cuz you I think you forget how much of a influence Disney has in everything. Totally. And I was looking up the list for animated just to make sure I got everything I yeah. wanted to and then I realized so many movies I liked when I was younger they were Disney and I had just no clue right because I always think of the animated ones as Disney yeah. and then other things you just don't think about but they're just as prolific for the and non-animated so, yeah so so many um so I'm curious if you're if you're gonna pick some of the remakes because I have all the originals on my yes. list so let's see what happens here yeah. so my first um, childhood favorite Disney and um, Disney live action. Well, there's a couple. Okay. But the one I definitely watched the most and was completely upset with was the um, the Parent Trap remake. Ah, okay. The Lindsay Lohan. Uh-huh. She did a few remakes. Yeah, and Disney. she did Freaky Friday. And uh, Herbie. Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So, yeah, she was like the go to. So, yeah, the Parent Trap came out when I was a kid. Mm-hmm. And I just, I loved that movie. I thought it would be so cool to have a twin yeah. that I discovered at camp. And who, like, I I don't know. I think maybe this fueled my weird, like, Anglophile ways. Because I loved how the one was British. Yeah. And then she, like, <laughs> went there. And the other one was pretending to be her. And then she got to go there. And then... Now, did she, I'd never seen the remake. So oh. did she do the double 
it was it two, the two yes. Lindsay Lohan did both. Yes, she okay. played both. She played one who um, uh, lived in. Um, I'm gonna just jump my details. Away. So sure. one Dennis Quaid was her father, and okay. they lived in Napa, so uh-huh. like local. Yeah. Uh-huh. And then the other, the British twin, her mm-hmm. mom was Natasha Richardson. Oh, nice. R.I.P. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Who, yeah, lived in England, mm-hmm. and then the mom was like a designer of wedding clothes, uh-huh. or like wedding dresses. And then there's this wonderful scene where they, there's like a model trying on wedding dresses, <laughs> and then I just I loved it. Anyway, um, <laughs> did you ever go back and watch the original with Haley Mills? I think so. Okay. I'm pretty sure my mom like forced me to watch it. Of course, um, like a good mom should. Like so, when yeah. it was on TV or something, yeah. and I just wasn't into it. Yeah. But yeah, I. You I might like it now that. since you love classic film because mm-hmm. Maureen O'Hara is the mom yeah. and uh, Brian Keith is the dad. So yeah. Okay. But yeah, Parent Trap for sure. I just watched it so many times. Mm -hmm. Well, you have never seen it, so my references aren't going to really resonate. But they have this fun little handshake they come up with. Mm -hmm. And then when they discover they're actually sisters, it's it's really silly because they look identical. Sure. How would you not? Yeah. Anyway. Well, that's okay. I thought that I thought there were two separate actresses for <laughs> Haley Mills, so I was kind of slow as a kid. <laughs> so there you go. But yeah, love the parent trap. Yeah, it's just there's an evil stepmom. I mm-hmm. am. Um, she's funny. I, I need to go back. I'll I'll rewatch. I'll watch the the remake. It's cute, and this it came out in. When, 96 or mm-hmm. it came out in 98 so okay. it's a really good kind of like relic of late 90s yeah. like i love their their like fashion and style it's so funny um it's just really it really looks 90s so it's kind of the 90s. um 10 things i hate about you era or yeah. they can hardly wait yeah but yeah okay yeah so like little i think there's like some crop shirts and very like minimal look and some plaid <laughs> right i <and laughs> Yeah, really love it. So for sure, that I think is still my my favorite live action. Okay. Um, then I almost mentioned in the animated, mm-hmm. I really liked the 101 Dalmatians. Live action, yeah. Um, that also came out in like 90, something mm-hmm. like 96. Mm-hmm. Um, Glenn Close was great. Yeah. She was just so cool, even though she's so evil. I just yeah. loved her look. She's a great, she's a great actress. So. Um. Yeah, and then of course the cute little dogs. Mm-hmm. I had a like old school like PC video game I played. That oh, really? <laughs> That's awesome. I had a lot of computer games based off of Disney stuff really? from the nineties. So what was the pre- how, what is the premise of the computer? I don't remember. You don't remember? Oh, okay. I don't remember. I had for sure. I do remember. I had a Hercules one. Oh wow! Um, and you like get to play. I can do things with the different gods. And, okay. There, there was some point you had to win something, but that was my childhood. <laughs> yeah. Um, but yeah, 101 Dalmatians for sure. Okay. And then, uh, what else? Flubber. I forgot that was Disney. There's another That's remake. That's also a remake. Yeah. So yeah. have you ever seen Absent Minded Professor with Fred mm-hmm. McMurray? Mm-hmm. Okay, yeah. No. It's to- It's probably completely different than the Robin Williams version because it's Robin Williams, so it's yeah. really madcap. The other yeah. one is kind of, it's fun, but it's, um, it's in black and white. The basketball scenes are very cheesy, okay. um, but it's still fun. So it's it's like night and day. Yeah, there. It's, it's worth seeing. When did that come out? Fifty nine. Like so it's okay. one. It's definitely that you know Mickey Mouse Club era. Okay. Um, but you might like it. Yeah, I mean, just for seeing Fred McMurray and yeah, yeah. see that version of mm-hmm. it because I the Robin the flubber's just like one. it looks like tar. Oh, <laughs> it's really? in black and white. Yeah, so it's not like colorful. And I think the one that came out with Robin Williams felt very like high tech. Oh, think, totally. The little flubber was like digital and yes. he could do all kinds of stuff. Yeah, where's the other ones? I mean, that's why I think <laughs> they waited long enough to do a uh, you know, like a revision of it because the yeah. technology was right. So, I think you can wa- kind of watch them separately and, and be okay with it. So, okay. Plus they rename I mean, it's not even called Abyssin Minor Professor, so. Yeah different then yeah i think of my 90s for sure i remember watching yeah flubber a lot mm-hmm. hocus pocus was disney yeah oh yeah. my god <laughs> epiphanies right now of course it was disney it was always on the disney channel <laughs> i'm so dumb oh, that's a great movie no Every video game Halloween. for that one no <laughs> okay oh that was so good i should watch that now that it's autumn i know it's halloween See? season can do my hocus pocus rewatch 
Um, yeah, there's just too many to list, mm -hmm. but I think I caught those are, my... Yeah, those are the ones that definitely stood out for you. Caught the ones that stick out, and then when you get to the 2000s, there's just a million. Yeah, they don't... I, I was talking to someone about this, but they don't stick out as much as they no, did the earlier no. ones, where yeah. you kind of knew it was a Disney film. Yeah, because yeah. there were so many like other production companies getting involved, yeah. and they weren't like blatantly like Disney, mm -hmm. like based on anything Disney-related. Right. And, yeah, like I was looking here and i mentioned in one of the previous episodes princess diary yeah 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 <laughs> that's, that's considered movie. see that doesn't feel like and a disney it movie it doesn't yeah it's not to me um even though i yeah you yeah, know what else like the pirates of the caribbean movies yeah they're disney but they're they just feel like action movies they just feel like action yeah. they, don't, they don't have that quaint like mm -hmm. cute disney feel and well, even like one of my picks, so like Brian picked Miracle, which was based on the hockey team oh, of the yeah, 80s. Oh, yeah, I've seen that. And even though it's a Disney movie, it doesn't feel, you know, no, it feels like a sports movie. There's so. that whole kind of set of, aren't there a few sports movies? Yeah, The Rookie, did? which I liked. Mm -hmm. um, but yeah, it just, I mean, it's produced by Disney, but it doesn't. Mm -hmm. And maybe they're doing that on purpose. I don't know, but yeah. Yeah, like the, the Chronicles of Narnia. Yeah, movie, that's just weird. That series. Yeah. So it just goes on and on, and yeah. there's too many. Too many, and then we get into Pixar, and it's its all. It gets confusing. <laughs> I know we could have done a Pixar uh, episode, but I figured we'd we'd probably be talking about the same ones over and over again. Yeah, so that kind of, I bundled it on this one. Oh, so cool. Well, thank you, Samantha. Good memories. See, Good I got memories. I got um, video game memories out of you. <laughs> <laughs> I need to try and dig those out. <laughs> I, you you should my, find them. They're probably worth something now. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks, Samantha. <laughs> all right, we're back with Malin. Welcome back, Malin. Hey there, thanks. So we're going to do this week, last week we did our favorite animated Disney films. This week we're going to do our favorite live action animated Disney films. Uh, I kind of already had a heads up that there might be some controversy in this one from Malin, so I'm looking forward to it, but I don't think it'll be as controversial as, as we thought it might be. So I'm curious to hear your list. No, I don't, I, I don't think there's anything controversial about any of my okay. lists. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> well, then that's um, boring, yeah. Yeah, so uh, so the first one, um, actually, and you know, the more I think of it, the more I could probably just leave it at just one, um, because when I think of live action Disney films, I mean, it's Mary Poppins, right? Is right. there anything else? That's right. Well, I Does thought you were going to pick matter. I thought you were going to pick <laughs> Mary Poppins as animated too, because of the, of course, the the dancing scene. Yeah, I was, but then you know, as we had talked about this a little bit before, and I, 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 I took some of your notes seriously um, <laughs> because I do, I do, I do listen. Um, and then I, as I thought of it more, I realized, you know, when I think back on Mary Poppins, it's not that I think back on the animated films; those are, are, are the animated sections. I think some of those are actually kind of forgettable. Mm -hmm. um, I can't believe I just said that, <laughs> but the, it's live action parts, um, maybe as compared even to the animated sections that, that really stand out. When I was a kid, however, I was um, obsessed with Mary Poppins, the character, as um, as a potential babysitter, because I didn't particularly care for any of my babysitters. Right. Um, I, I was obsessed with London as an environment, and I was also obsessed with this idea that you, you could somehow walk into these like other worlds and other spaces just by slipping through like a chalk painting or whatever it may be. And I think that has actually carried me through to today. Um, a lot of the films that I really like, even outside of Disney, mm -hmm. sometimes play with that. Um, David Lynch films in particular, you would never think of them in the same sentence, uh, except that he did direct a Disney film, but people don't even, people never think of that. No. Um, but he's really obsessed with these ideas of kind of um, crossing over into other um, uh, dimensions or territories and the idea that uh, the reality that we're living is fairly flimsy. Um, and Mary Poppins has a bit of that going on. Um, and I, I loved that as a kid. Yeah. Uh, escapism through cinema and then escapism uh, through escapism. It was fantastic. There's a lot, um, a lot of st good stuff going on there. Um, but yeah, so, so I think I'm comfortable just leaving it as a live action film rather than talking about um, it on the animated uh, list as well. Okay. But Julie Andrews in that film absolutely is amazing. Like, did everybody want to know um, 
Mary Poppins as like their personal like um, mentor or babysitter or nanny or caretaker or whatever like best friend mother figure and even, you know despite the fact that she's a bit passive aggressive and a bit of a demon at certain points which <laughs> I think is also fantastic yeah that she's not just a sugar coated goodie you know she does have kind of a um, a, a quickly shifting temperament uh, at some points and um, she's got a sweet outer coating, but there's something going on on the inside that we're never completely sure of, um, yeah, she, even at the end of the film, when she's got these kind of uh, ridiculous rules about her travel schedule that just <laughs> make no sense to anybody but her. Um, but, but I think it's great that you don't completely ever get a, com uh, a solid hold on who she is as a character. So there's a lot of magic and mystery left to her at the end of the film that I think keeps... Um, keeps people uh, interested in that character in that film and um, interested in going back to it and seeing it again. Yeah, I mean, she's definitely more complicated than um, than they lead on, especially in the movie. So I, I think it's she kind of does a really good job, you know, Joey Andrews pulling all that off. Yeah, absolutely. And her voice is amazing. Oh, yeah. I mean, she's the dual, I, dual threat. She can do anything. Yeah. yeah. Um, uh, and dancing. Oh, my gosh. Oh, yeah. Oh, and the root. The rooftop scene, I think, um, when I left that movie, the rooftops, yeah, something about the rooftops <laughs> was always kind of fascinating and interesting. Not to mention uh, chimney smoke yeah. um, into stairways up into the sky. Wow, what a concept. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Um, and above all of that, the cherry on top is, remember, Elsa Lanchester has... Uh, a cameo as the outgoing nanny in the very beginning of the that's film. right that's a good that's that, a, right that was also lanchester right yes that's a great great uh, great call there yeah, yeah yeah and she she does a really good job of kind of setting the scene for what's to come it was also interesting is because david tomlinson's in it bed knobs and broomsticks also gets kind of a uh nod to mary poppins because you know uh the main character in that um is basically like a Mary Poppins. So, um, mm. and that was, and then they both, and also that movie also had animation in it in addition to the live action. So, um, yeah. You know, interesting. I remember, so my memory of bed knobs and brooms, broomsticks is only from the trailer that was at the beginning of some of the VHS, um, live action films. Um, like the, I oh, guess the previews. Yeah. But I've never seen the film in full. I've only ever seen the trailer. I think if you enjoy Mary Poppins, you should definitely check it out because Angela Lansbury is also a very uh, gifted singer as well because she's been on Broadway and, and whatnot. And so, I, you know, some people I think compare it too much to Mary Poppins, you know, calling it inferior, but it's not. It's actually a very enjoyable movie and it came out a good 10 years after Mary Poppins anyway. So, yeah, definitely check it out. I think you'll enjoy it. I think it still holds up fairly well. Okay. Well, you know, Angela Lansbury is probably all you had to say to get yeah. to watch. But, yeah, okay, I'll have to check that out. It's also very British, too, so and I know you like uh, British films as well, so. Okay. Yeah. I'm sold, I'm sold. All right. <laughs> cool. Okay, okay, so the, so the other live-action films I wanted to mention. Sure. Um, are you going to be interviewing Danielle for this? I, well, I already did, so, yeah. You did? Okay. So I just want, I didn't want to be the only one taking a dark turn. Okay. On <laughs> Well, she, she <laughs> repeatedly. I, have, she re I, I can't. I can't guess what she's selected, but I, I'm hoping that they're a little bit grisly. <laughs> well, I, I will give you a, a heads up. She she often says, "I, I don't even like Disney movies," <laughs> so, <laughs> but of course she rattled off a number of them. So she she can say it's because of her kids, but I I, I think we know, you know, otherwise. I should. Uh, yeah. So um, the the reason I, I think of her is that my other favorite. Um, uh, Disney live action films uh, include something wicked this way comes oh, okay which I checked I'm I think I checked um, because I put this list together a while ago when we were first talking about this and I think that's d legitimately Disney studio release okay but it's um, based on a Ray Bradbury story and it's very dark and um, I saw it as a kid and it gave me nightmares for a really 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 long time. Um, I don't know if I was uh, afraid of sharks before I saw Jaws, and similarly, I don't know if I was afraid of spiders before I saw Something Wicked This Way Comes. <laughs> uh, 
Um, you know, um, I think that's probably an indication that I saw both of those films too early in life. <laughs> well, this came out in 1983, and Jonathan Price is in it, so... Yeah, yeah, yeah he's uh, brilliantly creepy in it. Um, yeah, it's, yeah pro- I, it's produced uh, yeah, so by Walt Disney, so it's produ- produced by Walt Disney Studios, so there you go. Okay, yeah, and that was a shocker. You know, kind of like the Black Cauldron. Yeah, um, yeah. Animated side being a lot darker than we're used to coming out of that studio. Uh, do you know what your Black Cauldron was? 1981. Okay, so maybe Disney was just going through, like, some really dark crisis that I should probably delve into a little bit more. Um, <laughs> <laughs> well, yeah, I mean, like, those were kind of dark. Yeah, those are kind of dark. The, the 80s were kind of a dark, dark era for them. Um, actually, sorry, I just looked it up. 1985, The Black Cauldron came out. So, yeah, I mean, not too far after something of this w- wicked way it comes. So, yeah. Huh. Interesting. Okay, so I have another date for you to check. Watcher sure. in the Woods. Okay. So when did you see that, or when do you think you saw that? Uh, all of these I would have seen in the mid-80s, early early 80s. Okay. And, you know, it really depends on when VCRs um, were initially being... Uh, put in households okay um not by purchase i mean like the first years that you were able to rent a vcr because that's what i was seeing right um so this all each of these films in the the, home i saw mary poppins i think when it came out in the theaters Mm -hmm. so the watcher in the woods came out in 1980 and Betty davis is in it yeah yeah okay so early to mid 80s i should look into this a little bit i know that's your era yeah, apparently. Oh, oh, and Mary Poppins, what's the year on that? 1960. 1960. Okay, yeah. so then I saw a re-release in the theaters, uh, obviously. Um, Which is what Disney... Uh, okay, yeah. so Watcher in the Woods with Ben Davis. Um, you know, I, uh, on the animated list, I mentioned that I like Beauty and the Beast because it's kind of a really good setup as a mystery film. And this one, is, Watcher in the Woods with Betty Davis, is... It's not a perfect film, but as a mystery supernatural suspense thriller for a you know for a younger audience probably it should a, a younger adult not children but like a young adult audience it was pretty good and mm-hmm. it's got like like you mentioned my weakness for like all things kind of british and british horror in particular um it kind of feeds off that like the hammer studios i think there are some maybe maybe intentional but perhaps even unintentional nods to hammer horror um films um because it's kind of this perfect um starts off with this perfect kind of uh british smoldering estate um in the countryside in england and a a family are moving into it and Mm -hmm. what happens to them afterwards um and this miss the supernatural um mystery kind of unfolds and betty davis is at um the center of it and you don't figure out how until towards the end but it's um yeah it's fantastic it's kind of slow it's kind of uneven um and the ending is a little bit crazy and i think the acting if i were to see it again i'd probably think the acting was a little bit way too over the top for my taste now Mm -hmm. um just based on my loose recollection of it um but yeah it's creepy as heck Um, (laughs) well i i missed out on it so I, i need to need to go check this out so Okay. Yeah. So you've got homework seeing uh, Watcher in the Woods. I do. I've got and, seeing, um, <laughs> yeah, you see, wait, you watch Bed Knobs and, and Broomsticks. Bed Knobs and Broomsticks. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. All right. Well, awesome. Thank you so much, oh, Malin. Oh, one, one more. more. I've got one more. Okay, real quick, because I'm getting kicked out. So. Oh no, ruthless people, Touchstone Pictures. Uh, so, <laughs> you're going against the grain. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Because Touchstone was uh, Disney's excuse to create adult-focused things, and ruthless people is so quotable and it's so hilarious and everybody in it is just absolutely chewing up the scenery um and i don't know if i've gotten a chance to praise ruthless people adequately in um previous chats but yeah i want to throw that in there for sure oh, I'm, w- I'm with you it's one of the more underrated classics from the 80s i mean you have danny devito and bet midler and judge reinhold and yeah, uh, but, yeah. And, and plus it's got a really good nod towards Disney as well. It does. Uh, and bet, uh, bet, uh, what's her face's um, line? What is it? I've been kidnapped by Huey and Dewey. Uh, yeah, exactly. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Thank you so much, Balin. I got to get out of here. Okay. All right. Okay, I'll talk thanks. to you Bye-bye. soon. Bye. All right. This is going to be a very interesting episode <laughs> <laughs> because 
Oh, you didn't specify. <laughs> yeah, say Dan whatever. <laughs> uh, Danielle is going to be taking uh, subsidiaries of Disney, of the the companies that that are under Disney, and yes. then turn them to live action. Which she missed the she defeated the purpose of this. <laughs> no, you did explain. I said live okay. action Disney movie. No one else played against the rules. But it's not. You didn't say like no subsidiary or whatever. I can. Whatever I, want I thought it was common brand sense. Disney, as you can see, I have no common sense. So there you go. I wouldn't say no. I wouldn't say common. You had no common sense. You you definitely drum by your own. You march by your own drummer. Yes. As as we saw by your last Disney yes, movie pick. Yes, I do. So how many do you have for live action? A bunch. A bunch, in no particular order. No, there's a order. Well, I have. Well, chaos. I have like. No, I have like I'm very respectful with you, so I have like the <laughs> six. <laughs> Try saying that with a straight face. I have the six like one. Your top. Like very Disney. -ish. Yes. <laughs> like like the way that it was, and I have my ones like the honorary. Can I say that? Not yes, you word. can have some honorary ones. Yes. Yeah. Or honorary. Oh. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> there you go. Okay, so let's first start with the official list. Yes. Because you don't do top five, you do top six. They are official. They're all Disney. We'll, 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 <laughs> yeah, we'll see. Go ahead. Have at it. So, this okay. is your show. Yeah. So, <laughs> so my, uh, I, how do you say? No, do the countdown with me. Number please. six. I, yes, number six. I, this I could do it. In sixth place, <laughs> yes. number six. Um, the Chronicles of Narnia. Narnia yeah, that, that, but that the, is. Uh, the Lion, the Witch, and the, the Wardrobe. Wardrobe. That's the first one, right? Yes, the yeah. first mm -hmm. one. I like it. Mm -hmm. Did you read the book? No, it's not my kind of okay. thing. But <laughs> <laughs> but the, I mean, I didn't even go, I didn't go to the movie theater to watch that. I I think I, I watched on Amazon. I, I don't know where I watched it. Uh, but it was a good movie for Disney, especially because. But it was, it was a good movie. I don't like There You Go, Disney again. <laughs> it's very religious. Yeah. So yeah. the idea is very nice. I like that actress that do the White Witch. What's her name? I don't know. She did, uh, we have to talk about Kevin. And she's like the Gabriel Angel on, um, my goodness, Constantine move. Mm -hmm. it's, no, no, it's not Constantine. It's the other one. But... <laughs> What's her name? Um, okay, we're gonna have a pause. Is it the girl? Is it the girl? Yeah, it's a woman. So She's there's the Georgie witch. Henley. No. And then there's Anna Popowall. I think this. Is this she? Is this she? Let me see. The picture. This one. Tilda. Blah, blah, blah. Oh, Tilda Swinton. Yes. Oh yeah, yeah. She is good. I mean, she's a very good actress. Mm -hmm. Once she's in the movie, I'm gonna watch the movie because of her. I yeah. really like her acting. Um. So it's it's very uh, I I didn't see some things coming on that movie mm -hmm. and I felt like an idiot because it's a kids movie so I was like okay then yeah you're dumb but <laughs> but uh, I could see like the religious link you know the Christ the lion and all the you know at the end when the thing closes mm -hmm. the story was like oh boy here we go. So, but it is a nice movie. The idea of the wardrobe and mm -hmm. etc. It it is okay mm -hmm. for Disney stuff. For Disney. <laughs> no. All right. In fifth place, uh, number five. Number five. So this is a good movie. Yeah. Uh, oh. Honey, I Shrunk the Kids. That was on my top ten list. See, yeah. uh, and it's Disney. It is so, Disney. Movie. And it's Rick Moranis. Rick Moranis. Right? Yeah, and he the, wasn't in many more movies after this. So. I know. And I was a kid when I watched it. Yeah. And it was like. Imagining how it be uh, my uncle's farm because yeah. we had this huge farm, and my you know my imagination would go crazy like oh my god can I imagine it? how am I going back to the house because it's so huge the place. Well, so it is. I would see like the horses and the dogs on you know my uncle's place, and I was like oh my god can you imagine? But it was like super. So you're tiny. You're, you're a little I was kid. A kid. Yeah. But it is. I, I watched it many times, many times as a kid. Yeah. Like, not once, two, three. Well, the special effects many are great times. just in that yard, so. Yeah. I know. <laughs> <laughs> it, it's really well done. I didn't really like the sequel that much, but that's... They, they yeah, blew, they, they blew up the, blew up the girl, and then yeah. the parents got... It, it, it's a mess, but yeah. the first one was It's really great. Good. Yeah, yes. it's really well done. Yes. Yeah, number four. So, number four, 
That's my kind of movie. There Honey, I Shrunk the Kids? Dis- no, the number four. Okay. Yeah, that you haven't one told too. me yet. But I was a kid when I watched I, sure. I, I don't think I would watch it again. It still holds up. I think yeah. you'd still like it. I think that your kids would like it. Oh, yeah. yeah. Oh, good idea yeah. for a movie night. Yeah, there you go. <laughs> for the winter. For the winter. <laughs> <laughs> so the fourth is National Treasure. Oh, okay. Yeah, yeah. yeah. It is a really With good Nicholas, movie. My mom likes that movie. It is. I like Nicolas Cage a, not as much because he has the same face for Whatever movie he does, yeah. he's sad, he has that face, he's happy, it's like a Botox face. Yeah, okay. It doesn't change. But, <laughs> but that, for that um, movie, he was good. Yeah. And that is kind of my type of movie. Like, there's the, the adventure kind of history yeah. behind, you know, like they found their fathers. Mm-hmm. The, it's in, like Indiana the, Jones. The yeah. Yeah. So I like it. I I enjoy that movie. Mm-hmm. I watched a while ago. Like, I do you know. like the sequels? Too? No, no, just, just the first one. Yes, okay. yes. But uh, yeah, I like it. That movie. That's a good pick. All right, oh, number. Th- I have a good pick. So oh, was... yeah, every now and then. Wait, yeah. I need to count here. Now I lost. <laughs> number three. Um, number three is Holes. 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 Yeah, my yes. mom loves that movie. I love. It. Yeah. We have the same taste. Yeah. Yes, I love that movie. It is sad. Yeah. It is intriguing. You know, mm-hmm. Sigourney we What's her name? The Sigourney Weaver. Woman. Yeah. <laughs> I can say The her Ghostbusters name. lady. Uh, is there, and she's a great actress, yeah. of course. And there's the history of, you know, the black guy cannot kiss the white girl. Mm-hmm. And, you know, Disney talking about that. That was, like, surprising, mm-hmm. actually. And... I like it, the movie. I like going to the past, mm-hmm. going to the present, how yeah. they tied up everything. It was, yeah, it was surprising too. Yeah, that that's a good one. I and forgot about that one. I didn't know it was a Disney movie, by yeah. the way. Do you forget? Yeah. So I was watching on Netflix. Oh, okay, I'll watch it. And then when it ends and then goes Disney, I was like, are you serious? <laughs> no way. So I look on Wikipedia and it was. It is. <laughs> it's funny, after. Um, Probably the early 90s, Disney movies didn't become... They weren't that obvious. Mm-hmm. Like, you didn't realize they were Disney movies. Yes. I think they did that on purpose, too. I think so. Yeah. It was the recipe was being Yeah, because you knew, well. like, the ones in the 70s and the 80s. And even before that, there was mm-hmm. a certain look to it that always looked the same. Yes. So. All right, number two. Number two. <laughs> it's Maleficent. Oh, yeah, yeah. That just I came like out. Yeah. I like Angel- the actress, Angelina Jolie, mm-hmm. for that movie especially. But uh, you, and it's about the Wicked Witch instead of Cinderella. Of or not uh, Snow White. Of course White. I need to like. No, it's not Snow White. It's Sleepy Beauty. Sleepy Beauty. Uh, of course I'm going to like yeah. you, right? Yeah. <laughs> because it's against the... Yeah. <laughs> it's not that. It's, it's like I say. Uh, there is uh, there's that uh, Wicked, the book. The, in the, the play. The, the yeah. play, of mm-hmm. course. It's from a different perspective. Yeah. And I like that. Mm-hmm. Like it's not how it's, oh, I don't like the, the stepsisters yeah. because... No, no. So the story is super cute. Um, Angelina Jolie is great. I mean, she's beautiful with that thing on her head. Mm-hmm. Like you can see only the face. The face and that's yeah. amazing how pretty she is. Mm-hmm. And I like it why she became the witch. You know, mm-hmm. bad and what happened and da 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 da. Mm-hmm. And the true kiss was her and the true love. Right. It, uh, the love because mm-hmm. she really loved the girl and you know how wake her up it was like Angelina Jolie not the prince sure, so sure. <laughs> uh, I like it so see the witch had a reason to be pissed because the dad was a jerk mm-hmm. so there you go any woman would relate to that <laughs> to that so <laughs> there you so go that's why you take it <laughs> all right number one what is your your oh everybody pick? knows <laughs> but you might as well you even met her Everybody knows that it's Mary Poppins. Yes. <laughs> yeah. That is definitely the most traditional live-action Disney movie there is. It is amazing how it was made for that time. Mm-hmm. The jumping on the cartoon thing, yep. you know, the interacting with the uh, the animated the, it, the it, penguins and the, yeah. yeah, it was great. And the guy, I think I told you Dyke. how he reminded me Jerry Lewis, like yeah. I thought like that that per- would be like perfect to mm-hmm. play that character. How you know? How I, I think he would have been too over the top. I think Jerry Lewis exactly. would have been. Where Dick Van Dyke is a perfect. I get it. Medium. Jerry Lewis for me is like um, the mask guy. 
Jim Carrey. Just, yes, very much. Exactly. You can tell he's influenced. So I can't. I put them in parallel, like yeah. over the top. No, I get that. Yeah. But Mary Poppins is magic. Yeah. I mean, every, I think everybody wanted at some point a <laughs> nanny like Poppins. that, yeah. or not even nanny, and someone in their lives like Mary Poppins mm -hmm. and the magic and everything. And nobody else could have played Mary Poppins as well as as her. So she Jim could, she could, yes. yeah, because she could sing and she was a great actor. I know she's gorgeous yep. too, right? In the face, oh, I love that movie. All right, so let's get to the really interesting <laughs> list. <laughs> so I found out. <laughs> <laughs> it's like, is this like your national treasure you just uncovered? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> I was so happy because I, since I don't like Disney that much, I had to do some research. Okay, mm -hmm. let's see what Disney movies, it, you know, exist. So as I was looking, I found an interesting list with interesting movies that I actually like. <laughs> that were subsidiary companies of Disney. I didn't know that. Okay, let's go through uh, these. <laughs> so there is there are some movies that I really like. <laughs> so the the third place of the see only three. Okay. How good am I? <laughs> so well, we'll see. <laughs> is Guardians of the Galaxy. Yeah, and I, it is yeah. Disney's <laughs> I guess it is, yeah you're right. Well, it's Marvel, but Marvel's now owned by Disney, yes. right? Yes, yeah. so is in the list. I'm not, I'm not like, going beyond, how do you say, breaking the rules. It's Disney. Sure. So, there you go. I love Guardians of the Which Galaxy. Do you like both of them equally? Have you seen the second one yet? No. I, 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 I think you'd like it as much, if not more, than the, oh, really? the original. It's really well done. Yeah. Okay. I like the first. So, see, it's Disney. Mm -hmm. I'm not doing anything wrong. So, the second one... <laughs> The second one, I forgot. Actually. Well, look at your list. I don't have it here yeah. on my list. <laughs> the second one, but okay, let me skip for the first okay, one. If so I remind, remember the second one, okay. I'll go back. This so is how your brain works. <laughs> <laughs> the first one is the Star Wars. <laughs> that is so cheap. That is totally. Because they weren't owned by Disney until. Excuse me, Lucasfilm is there in this. Not the originals. <laughs> That's so. Uh... Oh, I remember which one. Okay. Is <laughs> Captain America. The the what? This is ridiculous. It's Marvel. Um, so included. So what? Then put every Marvel movie ever made. Excuse me, is Disney is there? Go check Wikipedia. Not this is ridiculous. There's a, like a list on the internet. I think your three minute a baby is more of a. Uh, Anything touchstone would have been okay. <laughs> All right, I'm cutting you off right now. You're, 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 you're obviously drunk. You can't go through this. Well, well, you should be more specific. I was. You made original... Disney movies, so there you go. You had. Everyone else night. played by the rules. <laughs> All right, as always, thank you, Danielle. Sure. <laughs> okay, we kicked Sarah out of the room, and it's just Janice and I. She's so, she is so damaged. <laughs> oh, please, you hate Disney because you're evil like that. True. <laughs> We're going to talk about your favorite live action, live Disney, action movie. Disney movie. So you have one that's probably people have definitely seen, then you have one that's a cult classic, if we want to call it that. So. Yes. Well, I have Remember the Titans as definitely. the one that everyone knows. Yep. Uh, Denzel is amazing in that movie. Uh, I just was, we were just educated by Sarah that's that right. it turns out. On Sons of Anarchy, which is a show I've never seen before. Uh -huh. There's some character named Opie is Opie. a badass. <laughs> Who's dead now, apparently. Shut up. But, um, is whatever his name is. <laughs> you didn't remember the, the Titans. Titans. He's the one that gets injured. And dies at yes. the end by the drunk driver. Yes. Um, which by the is, way, by the way, by the way, on a side note, every time I tell people that and they figure out, the, they're like, shut the F up. Everybody's always shocked. I am too. Right. Although yeah. I would help. Even, now imagine if you watched the show. Well, now that I know he's dead, it's kind of anticlimactic to go well, back and watch it now. Life. No, but I mean, he's dead on the show, so it's like, why would I go and watch a character that I know is going to die? Like seven seasons where it's awesome, and before he dies. Oh, so he la it wasn't like the first season that he dies. No, it wasn't 90210. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> ladies, ladies. No, no, I'm just saying, oh, you should go watch it. I'll rewatch it with you. Add that to the list. Yeah. <laughs> Sinise is back. All right, uh, so it's good. But you have ha Hayden Panettiere, yes. one of her earliest movies. Uh -huh. She's adorable and cute, and she loves sports, so I, I bonded with her in that sense. Yep. Uh, of course, you have Denzel. You got Denzel. You got, uh, what's that guy's name? The guy who plays as a defensive coordinator. I He's a great, I love that guy's name. I, whoever that, that guy, guy is. Yeah. Yeah, anyways. Um, and it's a football movie, and it's, Based on a true story, so I mean, how can you not love it? Oh, yeah. On all kinds of levels. No, it's great. But uh, the more obscure. Oh, Ryan Gosling's in it. Yes, Ryan Gosling's <laughs> in it, yes. Yeah. He's kind of a dorky little country music loving yeah. guy. 
who gets uh, his position taken over by um, the guy that was on Scrubs. Yeah. The Black Guy on Scrubs, whatever his name is. So Donald Fison. Thank you, yeah. him. Yeah, mm-hmm. he takes his position as a, I think he's a, I want to say he's a D-back. Yes, you're right. You are um, right. Anyways, uh, so the more obscure that I just found out was a Disney movie, I didn't even know it was a Disney movie, mm-hmm. is a movie from the early 80s called Midnight Madness. Which we had discussed a couple weeks ago. That, yes, yeah, that yeah. everyone needs to watch. Yes. Uh, so explain the plot of this movie if, you've never, if okay. people haven't seen it. Plot. Uh, basically, <laughs> it's a bunch of college kids, and they're in they're set up in teams, mm-hmm. and the teams are all very cliche. You have a bunch of nerdy... Sorority girls, yep. which I didn't realize it was such a thing, but there is. There are, yeah. Um, a group of jocks, mm-hmm. a group of nerds, mm-hmm. straight up nerds, and then you kind of your like normal group of college kids, right. the normal group, but right. compared to everybody else. Yeah. <laughs> and this one guy who also goes to school with them has come up with this game yep. that he calls the All Nighter, the Great All Nighter. Right. And it's basically a scavenger hunt throughout of out throughout LA. Yep. And tons of fun. But the big thing about it is that it's, I think it's Michael J. Fox's, like, probably first movie it role. It's He's, way, like, 13, 14 yeah. years old. It's a good five years before Back to the Future. So. Well, even before Family Ties, And Family too. Ties, yeah. Um, but it was a movie that me and my cousins loved as kids. Mm-hmm. We made our parents do scavenger hunts in our backyard, <laughs> just like the show. I mean, I must have watched that movie um, at least 100 times growing mm-hmm. up. Yeah. So, um... It's on DVD. You it's on DVD. Find, we yeah. found out because yeah. I spent years trying to just find it on VHS. And yeah. Now I find out you can get it on DVD. Yeah. So go to Amazon and you yeah. can buy it on DVD That's for right. like five bucks. It may be on Netflix too. So Maybe. I don't know. Yeah. Probably not. Probably not. But probably, <laughs> yeah. But you never know. You never know. So Midnight Madness. Midnight Check Madness. it out. Thank you, Janice. Bye bye. <laughs> If you enjoy this podcast and are an iTunes user, please do the show a favor and head on over to the official iTunes page for damn good movie memories. Be sure to leave a rating and a review. This will allow the show to appear higher in the algorithm and spread the joy of this podcast to the masses. If you are not an iTunes user, you can still listen and subscribe on Podbean at damngoodmoviememories.podbean.com. Be sure to like us on Facebook under our Damn Good Movie Memories page. You can also listen to a limited number of episodes on YouTube. I hope you enjoyed this week's episode and be sure to tune in next week for an all new episode of Damn Good Movie Memories. 